we can't cook. Better get you some. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Well, hello, hello, you beautiful people, you. Welcome back. Welcome to my Hungarian style goulash. First thing we need, <laughs> first thing we need is not what I got, but you got that. All right, so we need a kilo of four quarter veal diced up. But there's no way in hell I could afford veal. So I had in the freezer some, let me get it right, oyster blade steak. And you're supposed to have a kilo, but I've got 800 grams, so that's going to have to do. So I'm using the oyster blade because that is absolutely beautiful for stewing, casseroling. Um, the chuck steak, all of those sorts of steaks are awesome for the casserole. So if you can't afford the veal, just do what I do and grab whatever you can. All right, so we need a kilo of whatever we're getting. We need three medium potatoes, a medium onion. We need paprika. Today I'm going to use my smoky paprika, but you can use hot, you can use whatever you want. We need some tomato paste, a couple of cans of diced tomatoes. These are only a 400 gram can. If you've got the 425s, they're absolutely fine. It doesn't matter. So a couple of cans of that, some chicken stock and some flour, uh, some fresh oregano, and we only need two teaspoons chopped up of that, and caraway seeds. Now these caraway seeds, I bought these years ago. Yeah, I said years ago. So people don't realise that all your herbs and spices, all your dry stuff, will last you forever. As long as you keep them sealed up properly, they will literally last you forever. So anyway, I bought these ones from a Indian grocery store, Indian grocery store, um, because I couldn't find them anywhere else. But that was like eight years ago, so you might be able to just get them in the shopping centres now. But have a look for them. So caraway seeds. If you can't find them, that's where you go. And even though I've probably only used these, these about six times, that's six recipes I could have had because I was sitting in the cupboard, you know what I mean? So it's worth getting them. Alrighty, now, this recipe, you can, what I'm going to do is with the meat and the onions, is fry them up in the uh, fry pan first, and then I'm going to put them into my little cast iron cooker, and I'm going to sit it on the stove top. Now you can do all that too, brown it up in the frying pan, and then you can put it in your slow cooker. Um, if you're going to use a camp oven on the fire, uh, on the coals, I would preheat your camp oven, camp oven up first, take it off, it will stay hot long enough for you to brown your meat and onions in it, and then you can throw all the other stuff in it and put it back on. Now, if you are going to use a camp oven, use a small one, because this is not a massive recipe. If you're going to use your big camp oven, double or triple the recipe. If you ever double or triple anything, just whack on a bit more time for cooking. But you'll know anyway, you pull the lid off, if the meat's falling apart, hey, it's getting close. <laughs> all right, so first thing we're going to do is peel and chop up our onion and set it aside. The second thing we're going to do is dice up our meat. All right, so I've chopped the onion up and put that aside. Now I've chopped the meat up. So I do it into chunks like that big. Now it's up to you what size chunks you want your meat in, all right? If you do them really big, it's just going to cook longer. If you do them really small, you'll be able to cook it quicker. If you're going to do it in the camp oven and you want to cook it for longer, make them in bigger chunks and just add more um, chicken stock. So we're going to get them, get a freezer bag and put your meat into a freezer bag and set that aside for a minute. Alright, so in a small bowl we want to put two tablespoons of plain flour, one tablespoon of paprika and two teaspoons of the caraway seeds. Now we just want to mix it up really well. Alright, so once we've mixed that in good, the next thing we want to do is get our frying pan on halfway um, and heat it up and get our casserole dish or it does whatever you use just make sure you've got a lid get that out ready to go so we can put our meat straight in it now our pan's heating up get our flour mix sprinkle it all over the meat close it up make it with a big air pocket so it's nice and big and just keep flipping it around once we go to put it in the pan just sort of bang it around a little bit each piece and dust it off to get the excess off and we're ready to rock and roll so the first thing we want to do is throw roughly 20 grams of butter in there and a tablespoon of oil all right just pull it around okay so the first thing we want to do is put our meat in and all we want to do is just brown it all right Right, a couple of minutes later we've browned it up 
So now we're going to put that in our oven dish. Now we fry our onion for a couple of minutes until it's see-through and then we whack it in with the meat. Now into that we put one cup of chicken stock, our two cans of tomatoes, the whole can, one tablespoon of tomato paste. Now we want to mix it around really well. Oh mate, it looks and smells amazing already. We haven't even cooked it yet. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing mine on the stove top. So now I'm going to put it on there, get it up to a simmer, leave the lid on and simmer it for half an hour. Um, if you're going to do it in the oven, I'd preheat your oven at 180 degrees and maybe give it the extra 10 minutes. So when we've got about 10 minutes left to go, we want to peel our spuds and just chop them up. Not really small, but not really big, just in the middle. Alrighty, so now it's half an hour later, so now we want to throw in our spuds in, give it a really good mix up, and we want to cook it for another 45 minutes with the lid on. While that's cooking, chop up your oregano and just leave it sitting aside because we throw that in at the end. Oh my god, mate, 45 minutes up, and this smells absolutely friggin' amazing. I'm telling you, this is the best goulash you'll ever have. You'll absolutely love it. Alright, now that our 45 minutes is up, now we want to cook it without the lid on until it thickens up and it doesn't take that long. So depending on how thick you want it is how long you cook it for. Now if you're going to do it like me on the stovetop still, you want to stir it every couple of minutes because I don't know why but once the lid comes off it will uh, stick and burn to the bottom a lot easier. Same with your camp oven. Take your lid off it and just constantly stir it every couple of minutes until you've got it to the thickness you want. Now if you're doing it in your slow cooker, uh, pull the lid off the slow cooker, crank your slow cooker up and just stir it every couple of minutes. And I forgot to say, and if you're doing it in your oven, take the lid off, put it, give it a good stir, put it back in the oven. It'll probably take an extra 10 minutes or so than what it would on the stove top or on coals. Alrighty, five minutes later, and I've got it at the perfect thickness that I want it. Oh, look at that goodness, mate. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, so once you've got it to the thickness you want, you now want to put your two teaspoons of oregano in. You want it to give it a good mix through, and we are done. Now, you can serve this on mashed potato. You can serve it on rice. You can just have it in a... Uh, just put it in a bowl with a big wad of damper. Um, I'm going to do some fried garlic damper with it. Um, big damper or fresh bread and rolls. Uh, you can do it any of those sorts of ways. Now the other thing you can do is you can keep cooking it for a bit longer and make the sauce really, really thick. And once it's gone completely cold, you can use it as a filling and make your goulash pies. And oh, oh mate. Or the leftovers. You can stick in the fridge. Um, they're good. They're good for probably up to three days in the fridge. Um, you can, if you're going to heat it in a saucepan, you just want to add a little bit of water or a little bit of chicken stock with it, just so it doesn't go dry while you're heating it. You can use them for toasty toasties or jaffles um, when it once it's cold, straight from the fridge as well. Uh, what else? Oh, you can just. It's amazing what you can do with this. Oh, I can't wait to smash it. Oh, and to freeze it, it freezes really well too. So you just freeze it up in a container or whatever you're going to do it in. Once you've thawed it out, put it into a, a saucepan, add a little bit of water or a little bit of chicken stock to it, and on very low heat, heat the whole thing through. Well, there you have it, you awesome people, you. Hungarian style goulash. So all I did was just throw another little bit of oregano on the top and... Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Have yourselves an awesome night. And I'll see you on the weekend. Bye.